Very good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Ashutosh Singh from representing CleanMax Solar here. Uh, we have been in the solar PPA developer sort of phase in India. We have uh, not just rooftop systems, but also a couple of farms which are operating in India as of now, uh, specifically in the states of Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. But looking at the audience as well as the situation that we are in, I'll stick to the rooftops uh, side of things. Uh, this, so I'm going to, because of the lack of time, I'm going to skip the company part and quickly get on to the business models which are actually active in the solar front as of now in India. Now, specifically speaking, uh, if you start off the first business model which actually came into India is where you buy your own solar system, set it up on your rooftop, ground, wherever, essentially the investment being yours. Till date also, I am a firm believer of this, if you are sitting on a pile of cash, this is the best way to go. You avoid a lot of risks, your returns are pretty high because you get a tax break on top of it. So essentially speaking, if you have that kind of money and you don't have any other avenue of deployment to it, please go ahead with the CAPEX model also. Following through now, this has become a very regular practice in the solar space, specifically in the rooftop region also, where you can go out to the market, pick up a PPA, which is basically a power purchase agreement in which somebody else is investing for you. All you're doing is buying energy on a pay as you go model or probably on a minimum commitment model. So that is the second model which has been popular. Also the other two models that I'm touching up on is the higher purchase model and the lease rental model. Now essentially speaking, these are not very popular as of now in India, but we still have a couple of projects running under these. They come with their own plus points and minus points. So for example, if I take a higher purchase model, which will basically run in a fashion where the investment is done by your investor, developer or whoever the financing entity is, but the asset will actually sit in your books. So the plus point becomes for you is that you get the tax break out of it, but the investment goes in as a deferred format where you are actually paying back for the asset in terms of an EMI or you know recurring payments over the course of time. The last and final model that I would like to touch upon is the lease rental model, which is predominantly derived from the DG industry. So a couple of years back when DGs were a high investment for an industry or a household also, you could go out to the market, rent a DG with an OPEX agreement or what we call as an ONM agreement where the guy is maintaining the asset for you, you're just paying him per unit. So this is pretty much common to the PPA model. The only difference here in this case is when you do a lease and rental model, the asset goes back to the investor or the owning entity by end of the agreement. You have no lien on the asset and plus you don't capitalize this asset on your books. So the tax break still remains with the investor or the investing entity. So a couple of models that I'd put in uh, down onto the PPA. Now going through each of these models in a detail, we can do that over offline or something because essentially speaking, these models are pretty complicated in terms of financial transactions. And my <laughs> colleagues here, they are part of this industry and they operate on different models. So you can pick and choose any of us to talk about these models in a various fashion. Now, moving on to, uh, sorry, I missed the, I'll come back to the previous slide a little later. Now, in terms of key aspects, when somebody looks at in terms of a solar install, uh, installation or a solar investment. Now, why I wanted to specifically touch upon this side is because in the audience here, you'll have people who are ready to invest their own money. There'll be people who will be system developers. So, but you should always get a perspective as this was quoted in the last session also the market performs differently for a different person. So for example, today an EPC guy is getting pressure for reducing cost. On the other side, the customer is getting pressure to reduce his cost of buying energy. And the fi final guy who's the actual investor, he's looking at a return on investment. So there are multiple parameters which a project is evaluated on. So as an individual, as an entity or as an investing body, there are a couple of four or five big pointers that you should be looking at when you're looking at a solar investment. First of all being cost of capital. Now cost of capital as we all know is different for different entities in India. You could go to a Tata clean tech, pick up you know uh, World Bank line fundings which are much more cheaper than your conventional fundings which are available in India which will track you to about 12 or 13 percent whereas this one will be sub 10. So if you get a sub 10 number on your debt it becomes a very lucrative model in irrespective of what kind of PPA or what kind of arrangement are you getting in? You can be a self-owned developer and if you're getting such low cost of capital, you can invest your part equity on your side, pick up debt from a clean tech. So co consideration on cost of capital, what is good for you? You could be an MNC who has a very good credit line abroad. 
you can go back to your parent company, pick up low cost of capital, come and deploy that in your India plant. So this varies for a kind of customer you are or the kind of entity you are. You could be a PSU where you can get PSU lending from uh, the PSU banks. So all of these things make a lot of difference. So this is one of the key factors which one once you are evaluating a solar installation, you should be looking at. Second is the technology and quality. Now, as all of my friends from the EPC side and component sides have been uh, emphasizing on quality and technology is must. This is one of the key pillars of any good investment to get back. Now, in terms of technology, there could be difference between technology and the technology that you require. For example, you are doing a rooftop uh, system. There is no point evaluating a tracker on a metal sheet. That is something which is not possible. So I'm just giving a broad example to make people understand what kind of, so if I'm doing a ground mount system somewhere down south or up north, the tracker makes a lot of difference for me. But when I'm doing a rooftop system, the tracker makes no sense for me. It, it, it increases my system complications, it is difficult to install on a roof, small sizing is a problem. So always technology very well in hand your, with your quality. This is an in hand function which has to be evaluated during an investment into solar. The next and the biggest thing is risk. Now, over the last couple of weeks, we've been talking about risk in terms of GST going up, import duties coming in, safeguards coming in. Now, when you're doing an agreement or you're getting into a model, I, I'll keep the CAPEX side where you're self-investing out of this because that is the investment that you're doing on your books. But when you're doing an investment for somebody else, these risks become very big. Now, for example, the PPS that a couple of companies have done in the past six, seven months, Today they have a negative impact in terms of the GST costing. If the duty comes in, they, these projects literally become unviable. So your contracts or your agreements have to be watertight in terms of any change in law, any change in aspect of financial evaluation of the project. So the, by doing this, you are de-risking yourself in terms of any law change or any financial implication which comes to you. You will also have to look at vendor risks, you will have to look at component risks. So these are wide range of risks, so always when you are getting into a project, even if as a customer when you are buying solar energy, do take into account what kind of risks are you getting into. And last and finally is the return expectation. Now return expectation is a case to case scenario. I would want 10% return on my assets, somebody else would want 20% return on his assets. But when you are evaluating a solar project, make sure you bridge the gap rightly. For example, if you're an EPC guy looking for funding to fund one of your customer's projects who's not ready to invest into the project, it's better for you to go and find a private equity investor or go to a preferred lending bank like a clean tech or a SBI capital, one of those so that you get the lowest cost of capital and in turn the cost for the system becomes low. So that mix and matching has to be done at a developer or an EPC level also. So that's just a broad example. Uh, I'll leave out my case study because uh, this was uh, in the lack of time. So the, uh, people can go through the side very quickly. Thank you so much for the time. We'll take up questions in the discussion panel.